What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Sakina, and I'm back with another review. This is my review for the Real Housewives of Atlanta. This is season 14. What is this? Episode 12? I think so. But hold on, wait. I know y'all see your girl is on screen with it, okay? So I've done two videos already. I did Bell Collective and I've also done uh, Ready to Love. So if y'all watch those shows, check me out, okay? Watch those other shows. I've also been on camera in those videos as well. I was like, you know what? Uh, life is just on um, the up and up for me. I recently just got a promotion uh, to a different department. So, you know, that has been like the biggest pain in my literally like I've been miserable anybody who follows me on Instagram they've seen the post yesterday I'm sure <clears throat> but I started my new position yesterday but it's been six years since I've been with my company and I've been in the same department for those six years and it's not like I haven't tried but I had literally been miserable for all of this time and this is a new beginning for me I'm ready to get back in the YouTube streets I have not been able to, you know, work and do YouTube uh, consistently in a long time because I just have been going through so much mentally. So that's the reason why I have only been sticking to one show and then doing the panel. But um, yeah, now I get off at five o'clock. I, I don't even know what that felt like beforehand because in my previous role, I had been getting off at nine o'clock at night. So it's just like, not me fresh off of work. What time is it? It's 5.21, y'all, okay? For anybody who can see, 5.21, and your girl is in these YouTube streets. Productivity, I'm just so proud of myself. But anyway, yes, um, I'm just I'm just on call now, right now. Life is good, and I just really want to be really active again on YouTube. So here I am, we doing it. But before we can get into this review, I do want to let y'all know that we will be on the Whether You Like It or Not panel two nights at 9.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We will be doing it on Giving You the Real Tease YouTube channel. So be sure to check that out on the community tab. I always try to have it in my bio but or the description box. Look, this ain't Instagram. In my description box, but I always forget. So uh, forgive me. Check that out on the community tab. Be sure to check us out tonight it will be a good time. So anyway, let's go ahead and get into this review, right? So it opens up with everybody doing their own thing, blah, blah, blah. And then we get Miss She by Sheree. One thing about that Sheree, she get on my nerves. I cannot stand her, but she is so beautiful from the face to the body to the hair. Miss Ma'am got it, okay? That waist is snatched. Them legs is thick. Legs and hips. And body, body. <laughs> I can't hear myself. <laughs> but yeah, she's talking to Cairo, who is, y'all know, I always feel like Cairo is just an airhead. I don't know. And then come to find out he does music. I'm like, name somebody in Atlanta who doesn't do music. I get so tired of that. It's like everybody that you approach does music in some form or fashion whether they used to do it or they currently do it and i always feel like that's such a default career like do you really want to do that i thought he was into modeling i thought he was uh going to morehouse is he going to morehouse for music or something like i don't know I just get so tired of that i'm like it, it feels like when you have nothing to do when all us fails they do music <sighs> Anyway, she was asking him about that. And then speaking of him doing modeling, she was like, you know, I'm pushing out She by Sheree. She has some sketches in place and all of that. And from what I was seeing, the sketches didn't look bad. Now, I did check her website last week on the panel, and it wasn't giving anything. So, uh, we'll get more into that. But I just don't understand how she still doesn't have her website up and running, especially because it's like... If you have the material in the show is airing, why not go ahead and do it now? Don't wait, which I'm figuring she's going to do. She's probably going to wait until the fashion show drops to release the, the clothing. But I don't know. She just feels like, what, what did she say? Do or die? Girl, it's been 14 years. That shit is dead. We really don't have high hopes. Like, I, I wish her well. I don't wish bad on her or she by charade but it's just like girl i don't want to get my hopes up for something that you've been talking about since season one so my boy ace for anybody who doesn't know ace is one of my favorite celebrity kids i feel like he's so smart he's so cute i love a smart sweet kid and every time i see him 
on Candy's channel, he, not channel, on uh, her Instagram page, he just be warming my heart up. So he's turning six and she wants to do something real small and intimate for him because his birthday fell on a weekday, but she's going to do something big for him on the weekend. So she invites Drew and Candy, uh, not Candy, but uh, Kenya over along with some of their cousins. So they're celebrating. She rented out a video game truck. I've always seen those type of things, but I didn't know that you could have the kids playing on different games because, you know, some kids really ain't into the same type of video game. So I thought that was cool. Um, what else happened? No, that was it. That was happening in this scene. It was real small. It was real short and simple. Ugh, the peanut gallery. Marlo and Sheree. They at La Art Gob and Marlo is filling Sheree in on what's happening with the boys. One of them ready to go home. Another one don't shower, don't brush his teeth. All he want to do is lay in the bed and play Roblox all day. And then she got the nerve to be mad and question whether or not she should shorten the 30 days or if they on vacation. But ain't you on a 30 day vacation? Then you book your Blue Ridge trip the same weekend of your nephew's birthday because you had no plans on attending that boy's birthday. And I meant to comment on that last week when she said that when they was in the car. I was like, it's your nephew's birthday, but you on a cash trip. I don't care if you shorten the trip or not. You still did it in the midst of knowing that it was his birthday weekend. So you okay to parlay in the streets. But he can't play Roblox all day. The hell? And really, I mean, really, he needs to be bathing and all of that. But you're questioning whether or not they're um, being disciplined or if they have structure. But it's like, well, why didn't you apply that type of pressure when they was at your house? What you expect your sister to do when she got a house full of six people in a three-bedroom house? You done dumped two additional kids on the four little ones that she already got. And you got the nerve to complain? That don't even make sense. What? I just, I can't, I can't. That's why I call them the peanut gallery at this point because it's like y'all thought processes, they don't be making sense. Because what you mad at, Marlo? What what are you mad at? Either go get them or shut the hell up. But preferably, go get them because they, your responsibility at the end of the day. So then we get back to, um, Candy's house and they're having talks about, you know, little small stuff, what happened with the, um, guy who showed up to Candy and them gate. And they were saying that, um, Kenya was suggesting that they hire an off duty police like Cardi B does. Cardi B lives up the street from her and they have an off duty police, uh, person and all of that so then they got into candy's play and candy was saying that they actually had to shut it down because of the new variant of c19 and um how some of the cast had got it unfortunately we cannot control you know this situation that is happening here but um she's really bummed out about it and i really thought she was gonna cry talking about it in that moment because you can kind of tell that she you know she was ready to start up but you know she was really bummed out about it because really if you think about it this happened twice with Candy. When she did A Mother's Love, um, things just didn't go right and they had to shut it down. And she felt very bad because she felt like people were depending on her. And this is happening again. But this time she's more so feeling bad because she wanted to create a space for black creators who wanted to be on Broadway. So this is something that, you know, she holds near and dear to her heart. One thing about Candy, she is very passionate about all the things that she, that she does as far as business, all her endeavors. I mean... She could be a little passionate in some areas as far as the restaurant business, you know, because OLG needs some improvements, but she really does care and she puts her love into um, her businesses. So she was very bummed out about that. The newest member of the peanut gallery joins them saying, yeah, now that hair was laid. You, you be looking good. Okay. Your sister be laying that hair down. Okay. But uh, back to the situation at hand. Yeah. She joins Marlo and Sheree at La Argyve. And they start talking about how they feel so bad for Marlo. Sanya, Sanya, girl, she feels like Kenya shouldn't have came to the Blue Ridge Mountains because she was going to ruin everything. But my thing is, do y'all not feel like Marlo had a hand in that? Y'all was at the table when Kenya said she don't mess with her no more. But she came the next day. She still complied. She came. And then Marlo continuously wanted to have a conversation with her after Kenya already told her that she don't fool with her. And then you were obviously there as well 
when Marlo said whatever she said about Brooklyn, yet you're still defending her. And then Marlo, here you go again, reaching with Candy, talking about how disappointed you are in her and that's who she rocks with and she rocks with Kenya, right is right and wrong is wrong. Well, you wrong. One, for whatever you said about Brooklyn. And then two, for trying to sit here and point the finger and get mad at Candy when Candy, in your face, came to your defense after <laughs> Kenya sent you on a wild goose chase. <laughs> so what? Again, just always trying to pick a fight with somebody. She don't know how to be chill. Kenya, why you hang up on that lady like that? Oh my gosh, what just happened? So, Sonya is talking about the Jamaica trip and how it's a couple's trip because her and Ross are going together. So, they want if they do group activities for everybody to have, you know, a plus one to do things with. So, she decides to call Kenya on FaceTime, which I do feel is messy because you know you're at the art guy and you're there with Sheree and Marlo. So, that's probably why she decided to hang up, but it's still kind of like it's a little rude now. Now, yeah, so. She hung up on her once, uh, once Sonya said that it was a couple's trip. She was like, girl, I'm tired of this. And she hung up. Now, I do recall her saying that it was a couple's trip. I think, I think that's what she said. I don't know if she told us in, in a confessional or she told a group of girls, but I do remember her saying that she did want it to be a couple's trip. So Kenya hung up because she feels like it's insensitive trying to push the whole couple's thing and trying to get her to bring somebody when she's currently not dating. And uh, she was like, yeah, I'm just over that. And I'm sure I'll hang up on her ass again, basically, if she keep it up. It's like, I understand, you know, you're not dating or whatever, but you could easily bring another friend. Um, Hell, well, I think somebody said something was up with Brandon. Like, he stopped filming after the pillow talk, I think. I don't know, but I do feel like it doesn't necessarily even have to be a man. That's not what it gave me. It just seemed like you could just bring a plus one. So I will say I did not like the way that Kenya did that because there was a different way that she could have gone about it. Mm, yeah, that's just how I feel. Because I'm trying to also think about, you know, I don't know. I can't, yeah, I can't really justify that. I don't like that. I'm really tired of Marlo and the boy storyline. Like, I don't know. I'm just, I'm tired of hearing about it, y'all. So she had a parenting um, coach. And um, she was saying that she doesn't have any structure with them. She isn't consistent with it. And he was basically telling her the way to go, child. So next time the kids is going to come with her, she's going to let them come back before the 30 days and all of that. Okay. Woo, child. Okay. So we down at the Burris Tucker's residence, right? And they're talking about their trust. So they have the girls there, Riley and Kayla, and they're discussing, you know, setting up a trust fund. They met with somebody last week and he was saying that you can have different trusts set up for different things. So then they start laying out production as they start laying out all the things that they had prior to the marriage. We know Candy. Let me read it to y'all. Miss Candy got song publishing, the Candy Factory, Bedroom Candy, her house, her guest house, Mama Joyce's house, Tag's Boutique, and uh, yeah, that's it. And then on Todd's side, he has the Jersey condo. Now, together they have estates and then they have the restaurants. So Todd was saying, um, you know, if anything were to happen, he wanted to give the Jersey condo to Kayla. Riley understands that. And he said as far as... Um, their estate goals, he said that he doesn't want to give them a large lump sum of money that they'll just throw away. He would rather, you know, divide it out or give it out depending on certain stages of their life. Riley instantly ain't feeling that idea. However, I agree with that because, you know, you give people... Now, granted, they do come from a family of money, right? Um, Riley grew up with wealth. And Kayla, I can't really speak for her, but um, they're in a wealthy family. So that doesn't necessarily mean that they will blow the money, but you just never know. You want to be smart with your money. You don't want to just give them the whole thing. And then next thing you know, they have nothing else left because they didn't blow it on something stupid or whatever. So I understand what he's saying. 
y'all need to go ahead and get them trust funds separated divvied up and all of that because yes the girls do agree that todd and candy if something were to happen to one of them aka if something were to happen to candy and it was all left in todd's hands all three of the women feel as if todd would not do what he needs to do because even his own daughter was like candy comes from a motherly perspective you have to think about how both of the girls were raised differently you know riley again comes from wealth her mom is wealthy and then um you know so she she showers her with gifts and things like that she lives a life of luxury whereas you have kayla who was raised by her dad and feels like you know you got to get it out the mud you gotta you gotta learn how to have um life lessons in place so you can understand if something happens to me you'll still know how to survive which i understand there's a balance you still want to be responsible as an adult and all of that but at the same time if you're setting up this lifestyle for me, why can't I enjoy it in all the benefits? You know, so the ladies agree that, yes, Todd, you would kind of be on some, I'll give it to you in this, 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 this. And he found it actually offensive that if something were to happen to Candy, he wouldn't do right by Riley. And I can understand why his feelings are hurt, but he also needs to understand that he does have that personality that makes the women feel as if, yeah, if something was to happen to Candy, you might be a little stingy with the money. And, you know, that can cause some some issues within the family. So, they need to figure that out. But the man said that you can have different trust. And I'm going to need y'all to go ahead and have different trust. Because one thing about it, Candy don't trust you to make the decisions. <laughs> y'all just got to make the decisions together. And like I said, shit, just, just do it separately if y'all feel like y'all can't see eye to eye. Sheree doing her She by Sheree Fabrics shopping and all of that. The VPL, what she said, visible print line or whatever that she trying to get for the men. I feel like that's not really necessary, baby. We see right through them and Nike gray sweatpants just fine without a VPL, Miss Ma'am, okay? Because if you got it, definitely flaunt it. But to like do a VPL. That was the first time I even heard of anything like that. Y'all seen the girl, <laughs> the black lady, she was like, yeah. I wish her was like, y'all ever heard of that? She's about some, yeah, no, never heard. Girl, then why are you nodding your head? Yes, you ain't never heard of him before. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just like, okay, Sheree. She said, you know, she making a promise to herself to get, she bought Sheree off the ground. And then when she told the lady, when she first came in talking about some, I got a clothing line that I'm trying to revamp. Revamp? This shit never got out there to do a revamping. Girl, please. Okay, I understand. You know, it's supposed to be women's wear. Now you're making it, you know, both for men and women and all of that. But, and what you gonna do with the men's clothing as far as your logo? You gonna have that she star on there? We just gonna see how this turn out. So Candy and Todd, they come back together and he feel like, fuck them kids, okay? They entitled, which I don't think that the kids are entitled. He just doesn't like to hear uh, criticism about himself. So baby, you just gonna have to get over that. So he was like, you know, whatever you got planned for the kids, just write it, put it in the trust. So they won't have to ask me for anything. Give all kind of details, okay? Because one thing about it, he gonna be structured and they just have two different views on that. So then she starts talking about how she got approached by a producer to do another Broadway show. Um, I think it was her manager. I think that's who Nick is. The, remember the white guy who was on the FaceTime call with her that day? Um, she said that he thinks that it's a bad idea. I feel like I was yelling. Um, <laughs> he feels like it's a bad idea, but Todd is like, just go for it. You know, I think it'll show people dedication that you're dedicated. You know, you do want to win a Tony. If it goes left, then, you know, so be it. But he just really wants to motivate her or whatever. And she loves that about him. Um, you know, I do feel like you definitely want a partner that is going to motivate you. But at the same time, Todd, you're motivating her, which you should do. But then you also go and complain about how she works a lot. I just want to keep that in mind. But I love that, you know, 
Candy, keep going. Do your thing. You got goals to reach. Just make sure you maintain it. Keeping uh, your family in the loop and spending a little time with them. Y'all, why is my mom outside of my window with her Christmas pajamas on? They're not like Christmas printed, but it's the little button down with the shirt set. Like, it's, we bought it for Christmas. Is she peeping in my window from outside? Girl, what are you doing? Get in the house. Anyway, um, so the girls get over to Sonya's house. Now, mind you, this is a celebration as well for Sheree because her birthday had just passed. So, it's a little surprise gathering. Drew did not bring a gift because she said, listen, I don't fool with her. You know what happened in Blue, Blue Ridge. I don't mess with her friend. My presence is enough. And I feel her. I mean, if I don't fool with you on that level, I'm not bringing you a gift. It's okay. Um, so... Kenya arrives. She speaks to everyone, including Marlo. And uh, Marlo is pressed, you know, per usual, uh, off the sight of Kenya. She's very bothered regardless of whatever she tells herself mentally or in her confessional about how she's not going to allow Kenya to ruin her vibe and all of that. Girl, please, as soon as she's walked through the threshold, I said threshold, threshold, you're upset and annoyed and bothered. So, Sonya's giving um, Kenya a tour of the house that definitely needs some decorating because the uh, animal printed rug, that old church painting of you and Ross, oh my gosh, ghetto. Like, girl, no. I just feel like you definitely need to hire Kenya to assist you with your decor. But she's giving her a house tour as well because she wants to talk about uh the phone disconnecting and all of that hanging up on her when they did the facetime call so she lets her know you know we're not having that and kenya was like yeah no we are having that i'm gonna hang up if i feel like you saying some bullshit now i do feel though i don't care for sonya i do feel like it was rude and it was disrespectful for kenya to do um if you are cool with sonya then simply let her know girl i mean <laughs> Try to get clarification or at least let her know, listen, I don't want to hear all of this. I'm hanging up. So Kenyon was like, look, I mean, she basically said that, but it was just like, look, girl, I mean, I don't really like the way this conversation is going, so I'm going to talk to you later. You know, just a different approach from how she did it. Um, and Sonya wanted to hear her out, and Kenyon was like, you know, I was in a happy place in 2021. You know, I'm not taking no bullshit from nobody, not my husband, not anybody, so... Um, if I feel like, you know, I don't like what I'm hearing, we cutting it. So Sonya was like, well, I just was saying, I wasn't trying to come off in a condescending tone with, you know, let's be, I want to make it clear situation. She was basically coming from a standpoint of, I want to make it clear. It doesn't have to be somebody that you're in a relationship with, but you can bring somebody. And I don't blame her for trying to clear that up because last time when they went to New York, Kenya had an issue with that. So, yeah, I mean, I don't blame Sonya for actually trying to make that clear. So, you know, they squashed the beef or whatever. But um, I already know that they don't get along. So, ain't too much of that lasting long anyway. Ooh, honey. One thing about it, Sonya, you definitely do not know how to throw a party. Now, Sheree, she know how to show up to the party that she didn't know that was hers. Because she damn sure dressed like it is her party. Sheree looked good as hell in that Gucci outfit. The only critique I would give her is the Gucci boots. I feel like it was an overkill. Like the, the Gucci print suit was enough. She should have just did a black peep toe or something like that. But I wasn't feeling the shoe. But she looked amazing. Like, girl, shout out to you for that. So, Sonya getting her all hyped up and stuff. She didn't got on this little, you know, like the little photo booth thing. And the camera spins around like a 360. Child. That ain't working. You got her friend serving Jamaican beef patties on a platter. She got some Stella Rosa with a twist top on the side next to the confetti. I said, oh my gosh, the, the food was catered, but it's, it's really not giving a surprise birthday party housewives edition. I actually cracked up when Drew was like, is this a party for dudes? No, dead ass, because that's exactly what it felt like. Girl, you, it's awkward. The music ain't working. Like, 
girl, what's going on? It, it, it's just a mess. It's just as a mess as Candy's outfit and hair was. Candy asked Drew if she brought those bones from home and she said, yeah, which is crazy because it's like, girl, why did you go and buy some bones and you don't even own a dog? Like, girl, okay. So she tells Candy that she had to stay ready and Sheree chimes in and was like, but you wasn't ready that day. And Drew was telling her, well, Sheree, I felt like you was throwing a rock in high in your hand because you brought this girl around. And my thing is, Sheree, I don't understand why you acted so lost because you definitely know what you was doing when you brought Fatum around. And for anybody who hasn't been in the loop, Fatum won't be on the show um, until the end of the season when they have the She by Sheree fashion show because when they were in Blue Ridge, she took Drew's purse and Drew went and told production or something along those lines. So sis ain't gonna be on our screens anymore up until the end of the season. And I'm happy about that because... To me, I think Fatum is lame. I don't like her. She's reaching. She was definitely trying too hard and coming on too strong for my preference. So, yeah. Bye, bitch. And Sheree, you know exactly what you was doing, like I said. So, in her confessional, Sheree goes and says that Drew is begging for her attention. And, you know, basically, how can you blame her because she don't get it at home? But I'm like, Sheree, you inserted yourself into what she said. Like, you chimed in and then you got mad because she addressed you. Am I the only one who peeped that? Like, and Sheree, you feel like Drew is whack, but in all reality, you just as whack as her. So Drew <laughs> Drew was bringing up the whole um, background check thing. Like, yeah, I mean, because even after she said something about Ralph being gay, then she ran a background check and Sheree was like, I mean, who, who am I talking to? Danielle, I don't know who I'm talking to right now. And <laughs> Ken, Ken, what's her name? Kenya was saying in the confessional that Drew, one thing about it, she going to fight for free. But, I mean, I really felt like Sheree kind of started that. I don't know. Look, here I am again, defending Drew. But, yeah, I do feel like Sheree was starting with her. So, I'm not going to sit there and be like, Drew was trying to be confrontational. She went in knowing that she don't fool with Sheree. But, uh... Sheree said that every time they get together, basically Drew is very confrontational or ready to argue. But your good girlfriend Marlo is the same way. And um, Fatum came for Drew. So, yeah, just like Drew said, maybe you don't remember or don't want to remember. She tried to, you know, call her old. But I didn't know Sheree was 52. But either way... She is old and cold because the bitch is bad, just like I said. I didn't know she was 42. I thought she was like 50. I said 42, 52. I thought she was maybe 50, but I wasn't sure. But, you know, sis look good. So, they just don't see eye to eye. They see each other and they don't fool with each other. So, then they go and cut this raggedy ass cake. I said, Jesus, did, did Deuce make this? Like, what is this, girl? They cut the cake. Somebody asked Drew to sing Sheree Happy Birthday. Drew don't want to do it, but she ended up doing it. And I was hoping that she did because I do want to hear Drew sing. We don't get to hear her sing enough. She did sound good. And Sheree was like, we know Drew don't know how to apologize. So maybe this is her way of doing it. Maybe the sleigh is clean. Who knows? And really, who gives a damn? Before this Jamaica trip, Sonya has a list of rules that she wants to make very clear to the girls. And you know what? That first one... We here with it, okay? You need to make sure you got some wet and wavy weave. You got some braids, something that can get wet because I don't want to hear nothing about how you can't get your hair wet when we on the beach, while we in excursions, all of that. Rule of thumb, everybody already know, when it comes to a black girl, baby, have that head done, have that hair being water ready, okay? So, I said, I see you. Anyway... They can't act a fool, basically. They can't bring pop props. They're there um, because of I fit. So this is a business trip for her. So she don't want no standoffs and all of that. So I'm like, I mean, good luck with all of that. Do you know the group that you're dealing with? You've experienced them several times at this point. So we'll just see how this Jamaica trip goes in the trailer tells us all that we need to know let's get down in the comments and talk y'all that was the end of the review also be sure again to check us out tonight on the whether you like it or not panel it will be hosted by giving you the real tea check your community tab we will be lit tonight 
Let's get down in the comments. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.